Um, yeah, so to get started, uh, the first thing I wanted to go over is we got some feedback during our last um, team sync on Friday that um, generally we are worried about like the quality of the uh, papers that are like at the homepage because in theory we've had like a little bit more traffic coming to Research Hub and in order to like capitalize on some of the attention we're getting, we'd like to like make sure like all of the papers uh, on the homepage are like kind of interesting to like the random person who might show up. So I guess uh, just generally, like I'd love to hear if you guys like just thoughts on the quality of the homepage. Like, are you do you also feel the same way? Like, wish it would be improved, or are you totally satisfied with how things are currently? I think it could be a little bit more informative on you know what's going on with any given paper so for example now in the bottom left there is there is a small you know small place for for users and i'm not sure if, are these the users who have uploaded the paper or they have added a comment doesn't seem to be the the later uh so i'm i'm i'm, I'm wondering if we could use this space you know, in the bottom of the submission to indicate useful information for potential, you know, potential users and participants of the conversation. Like this is how my, how many comments it has right now, or like the users that have commented so far, things of that nature. Okay, so just to repeat back to you, I'm sharing my screen now. You're saying like this part right here? Yeah, what is it? Yeah, so this is supposed to be like uh, users who have interacted with the post. Um, I agree with you that intuitively, this to me looks like people, someone who submitted it or uh, commented on it. Um, I also think uh, what this is counting now is like if you upvote it. So um, when I refresh this page in about a minute, my picture will be here as well. So it's basically counting people who are upvoting the posts. Um, so yeah, curious what you think about that. Oh, that. I'm not a, the biggest fan of, and I think it serves the function that you wanted to serve. And I think it, like, I think the number of people should only be represented or visible from the, from the number of upvotes. So I know right now it's diluted by the tweets, right? And however else you get the upvote number from, but I don't think it should be there in the bottom left. I would be very, you know, curious to see how it would look like if we could post there, like, you know, how many comments are there on the paper. And in, I'm, I've seen from the agenda today's agenda that you are introducing the ask a question feature. And that could also be something that can be there, kind of like two unanswered questions right now, you know, for, for this paper as in inviting the users to come in and see what's up, what's inside the paper, right? So I think a lot of the things on the page and the main page should be inviting, inviting to open the, you know, the, any, uh, a particular paper, right? And for it to be inviting, it needs to state what's inside or what can be done inside, right? So how can you participate? Yeah, I, uh, to I totally agree with uh, Anton, but the only comment I have is like, uh, like we discussed last time, um, we've got a lot of nonsense comments. And if you then see like, ah, there's a lot of activity, uh, you click on the post and then you get redirected to a page that's full of nonsense comments. That's maybe also not really ideal. So yeah, maybe really like fixing the problem with all the all these nonsense comments lately might be like high priority in order to make it more open like Anton suggested. I think that makes a ton of sense. I think yeah. uh, probably the number one thing we're struggling with right now is the spam users. And in general, I think it's a huge turnoff to like really academic type users when they come to the site and they see commentary that doesn't look like it's actually being productive. So yeah, I totally agree. Um, Pat, do you, do you want to just mention for like a second what we're thinking when it comes to spam prevention? Yeah, there's a, I mean, 
there's a couple avenues we were thinking. Um, at one point, we were thinking, hey, maybe we want to almost like you have to be a verified user for your comment to show up in the feed. Um, but we're not like we're still debating that basically. Um, and the way you get verified is either you have a like you link a .edu account or um, once you have been verified, you also have like 10 invitations or five invitations that you can invite somebody else who will then be verified themselves. So we were thinking about some kind of systems like this to prevent spam, but we're still not sure whether we go forward with those. Um, we're working with a company called Sift Science. Uh, they have a machine learning solution. Um, it hasn't 100% worked out for us, but we're talking with them very soon and trying to get like more, uh, we're trying to work through our use cases and seeing if they can work better for us. So yeah, we're, we're trying to figure that out currently, like how to prevent or not prevent, but like how to, how do we not show these users who are spam users? So in theory, the SIF science should work pretty well. And so for whatever reason, like uh, we've had issues with it recently. So hopefully uh, with a little like um, TLC from their team, we'll be able to like optimize things a little bit better. Um, but Philip in general, like I think this is like uh, going to be an issue for a while. It's, it's not going to go away. So if you have any like thoughts that come up where you're like, oh, hey, like this might be a cool solution. Like uh, if you post it in the, the community channel, um, and we like discuss it. That's like, like it's a uh, makes a very strong argument for me when I take it back to our team to be like, hey, here's the solution. When I can present like, oh, here's a community, you know, like uh, like an idea submitted by the community, and oh, everybody also likes it. So like, it just makes it much more powerful when I'm like, hey, here's a potential solution that everybody already likes. Um, so yeah, any thoughts? Like, feel free to share them. We can chat, dig into them a little bit more. Um. Yeah, I agreed too, Anton, that like that uh, that portion of the um, card on the homepage uh, should probably have like more like actual useful detail than with just up voters. Um, so the solution that we've come up with to increase the quality on the homepage, just is like a quick fix, just to see if things get better, is to make sure that like only posts that have been submitted by users are allowed to appear on the front page. So we'll still auto upload um, papers and they'll be kind of like hidden in the UI and just on the homepage for any hub and the homepage in general, like all the papers in theory have to be good enough that like an individual wanted to share them. Um, one thing Anton, your comment made me think of is like, so if we're moving towards this like more user generated like display for the homepage anyway, like I almost like the idea of putting the comment count back up um like on the home page card because we could kind of like so so the papers won't change as much right but we could double down on like putting comments on every post so in theory like the top five posts all had like two or three comments where if i'm a new person from an academic background and i stumble upon research hub like all the papers are interesting and then as soon as i show up it's like there's a, a small bit of like conversation starter that I could potentially like low barrier to want to hop into. So yes, yeah, that's absolutely that's absolutely what you want to showcase. The place needs to look inhabited, right? So once you log in, it should look like a place where you can interact with actual living, meaningful people, you know, not 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 have a bunch of papers that have zero comments or you know fake nonsense comments. Yeah, and I think uh, this one comment about that. Yeah, if we go with that approach and it makes sense to show the number of comments, I would say we need to make it more explicit, like with a tooltip or something like that, that you're looking at uh, like comments, like just to resolve any confusion about what does this section mean. And maybe also remove the band users. So I see a bunch of like, avatars with like a band avatar. So probably just uh, scrape those as well. Uh, 
Yeah, it sounds reasonable to me. Um, does anybody not like the plan of just having user submitted content on the homepage? Do we currently have any incentive for people to upload papers? So I'm actually, I'm a little bit out of the loop. I don't know what actions actually yield uh, research coin right now. Yeah, if you get upvotes on your paper, on the paper you submit, you will get some research coin, yes. Okay, I did not know that. Yes. We need to be careful here because um, we saw when we did the RSC giveaway that people were gaming the system and they're basically trying to create hundreds of accounts to upvote their own co content. So we need to figure out, we're, we're also trying to figure out a solution here to not have that happen again. Yeah, I think uh, spam is just going to be a pain in the butt for the next 15, 20 years. <laughs> it's, gonna be, it's never <laughs> going away. <laughs> um, I was going to say, it's like an impossible problem whenever you have incentives for people to, you know, like some people are going to be incentivized to make as much research as possible. So it's going to be. It's almost like it kind of reminds me of like a really delicate puzzle where ideally we'll get to the stage, you know, maybe it's just in my dreams, but like the best way to spam research hub is to provide a useful service somehow. You know what I mean? So I do think like eventually over time we can harness the spammers and use them for good. But um, yeah, that's probably, you know, that's probably much easier said than done. Um, okay. So if you guys feel good about the first topic, I think it makes sense to move on to the second. Um, We've been building out like uh, the ability to add new post types to Research Hub um, eventually, which will hopefully culminate in like kind of electronic lab notebook where people can publish like data sets or like preprints or pre-registrations or methodologies, like in theory, many different kinds of research outputs. Um, Pat has a demo of this ask a question feature. So we wanted to go through it um, on a screen share and then just hear what everybody thinks. Pat, do you have the uh, screen share? Oh, sorry, I was on mute. Um, okay, so ignore this account is under review. This is my local machine. Um, so we are building out this new kind of thing here where before this used to just be add a paper. Now it's kind of the only content you could add to the site. But now we want to, we still have the add a paper, but we want to add start start adding more free form text content. Um, the one we will launch immediately or like imminently, like very soon, is this like ask a question or start a discussion. Like this might not be the right title for this, but basically we want a way that people can create content that isn't tied necessarily tied to a paper. Um, and so, yeah, once you select that, um, you basically get pushed here um, where you can pick a hub that you want this to be live in, um, give it a title, and then we are building this kind of text editor out so that we can uh, more easily do certain things like tag papers, tag users, um, add files, and images and things like this. So presumably if you were, let's say you had a, I don't know, conf or yeah, a conference paper um, that you never published anywhere, we would want you to, you could use this system to go add that. Like if you had some kind of slides, you can go add a file here um, and just not a link, so that, that's that stuff still in development, but you could add a file, then you can also write some kind of text here. Um, and so we're trying to figure out, hey, what we don't 100% know what people will add from this kind of thing. Um, but yeah, I'm curious what you guys' thoughts on something like this is. Uh, how how will it reside in in terms of the it will look, homepage? Yeah, it'll look basically the same. It'll be in the feed as well, and it'll look roughly the same as a the paper card. Hmm. Um, let me pull up. In someone has a screenshot in Slack. 
Um, Are you thinking of having like different labels? Uh, yeah, to- we'll, we'll tag it differently. Yes. Um, but it'll basically look very similar where like the title is the title. We'll have some pre- uh, preview text of what someone posted and then a preview image if that exists in the post. Um, and so it'll basically live very similarly to this, but we're, we're going to tag it differently. So you could easily, very easily tell this is a paper and then this is like a, um, I don't know, free form post. So. Yeah, that, I think it's quite actually quite a risky feature because it might further detract from the you know the seriousness of yeah. the of the platform. I can totally see, um, like especially if you're a spammer, you just spam these kind mm-hmm. of posts a lot. Um, I think that's something we're definitely going to need to watch out for, and we can easily shut the feature off if we feel like hey, there's just too much like nonsense going on we can just shut it off quickly so i feel okay as so my my problem not problem but my worry is that it's actually going to be quite high quality of the content but it's just going to be this regular dudes talking type of mm-hmm. content you know like oh hey has anyone like wh- what is the I don't know something that sounds scientific, but no. right. You know. they, they do that on Ask Science a lot. I've uh, like I've been here. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, like a bunch of people come to this subreddit and like they're kind of just regular dudes, and then like make it sound like they're smart, but like they don't really have science behind what they're saying. Right. But there's also a lot of people who post on here who do have like very scientific answers and like are. Uh, backed up by like papers and stuff and they post that so kind of like the what we want to try to get is try to understand what kind of posts and conversations people can have and see if that's worth having on the site okay i think it needs to be yeah it needs to be very strictly and obviously and saliently segregated between the scientific uh content and because think about it right so one of the one of the goals that you have posted somewhere is to provide useful, you know, index of career progress, like impact in science, right? So yeah. like ideally in 30 years or something, you could apply for a faculty position and have your research uh, hub account in your resume or something, right? right. So if, if this was ever going to be the case, your score, the contribution score as a researcher needs to be something completely separate from the score that people get, you know, when 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 making uh, like jokes in the comments or something, you know. Right, 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 right. Uh, what about reducing it to like you mentioned conference papers? Uh, so mm-hmm. it, it would probably take a lot of uh, manual work, or uh, but tagging it to a certain uh, conference. Mm-hmm. Uh, that, that could be one idea, a beta, beta test that. Yeah, yeah. We were thinking people could also upload like some kind of data sets here or something else. And we kind of wanted to leave it kind of free form to see what people would kind of pu- publish, you know? Um, and it would take, we, we were thinking maybe it takes like, I don't know, a couple of months to really understand like what do people publish here? What do they want to publish? When they publish something like what's the response, you know? Um, so we didn't, we didn't want to, uh, I guess, constrain it too much in the beginning, but I think what we'll do is like, if we see a bunch of spam on it, we're going to have to turn it off and we see a bunch of junk, we just turn it off and then we try different stuff. Like we try to push like, Hey, submit a conference paper or Hey, submit a data set or Hey, submit like something that you've done that like maybe isn't good enough to get published and like, isn't worth it, but like you still want to share it with people. So, yeah. Uh, to, uh, to user experience related points. One, um, I think it's nice to have a preview option. Like, so of course, if I'm writing this content, like I'm curious how it looks like in actual page sure. online. Sure. Uh, yeah. And yeah. That was one thing. And second thing is like, will I be 
able to edit the content after I post it. Yeah, That's you will be able thing. to. Yeah, yeah. Good. So okay. So maybe like that should be clear on the page. Got it. Got it. We'll do that. Um, and so for, in terms of like a visual distinction, we do have some designs that make these things visually distinct. I don't know if we want to go go with these or not. Um, like we we did make it some designs where like these are the kind of posts that are not papers and then below are the posts that are papers. And so I don't know how you guys feel about that of like some visual distinction there or we can even like um, do this where we separate by tabs, you know, where we can yeah. have different kind of sections there. So separation by tab sounds good to me. Yeah. Or maybe. So, no, no, go ahead. Uh, this reminds me, Kobe, of uh, the presentation you gave where like in the hubs, there's like a delineation between like output. So I'll share my screen here. I've got um, this is Kobe mm -hmm. presentation uh, about a month ago. Um, and so let me pull it up. Uh, the idea would be like, if here's the home page, this would be like a hub specific home page. And like the first uh, tab could be papers, the second could be Q and A, the third could be data sets or like having delineation of content types like up here. So that way, when you come to the homepage, you could just see, you know, full fledged papers with DOIs. And then if you wanted to dig into the deeper stuff, which may be, you know, a little bit more murky, like you'd be able to filter them. Uh, at the top. Mm. Yeah, and I think um, I think what Pat just uh, showed, I think that's kind of like it, right? Yeah, yeah. Which is Very good similar. because it's also consistent with the search that um, right. Tatiana is working on. So I, I like I like that. Yeah, I don't know if you, any of you guys remember the uh, the old yeah yeah who contributor network where you could just upload like a, a slide of something or like an essay or a poem or whatever. Really? Yeah. Uh, and then you had you had something similar to this. So you had like your Q&A, data set, whatever, slides. And then you had, you would click and then you would get uh, like different subtopics, like this slide, mm -hmm. slides about this, data sets about that. So I don't know, it probably something to think about. Yeah, I think filtering the content types by uh, the different hubs would definitely be cool to, like if you were at the home page, to have another filter below each one of these content types. OK, um, does anyone else have any more like general feedback on that? We have like four minutes left, and there's one other thing we want to cover. One quick general feedback is that um, even though there's probably going to be spam, problem about spam at the beginning, Maybe maybe into YouTube too. I think it's super awesome that you guys are doing this. To me, a feature like this is very important to make research hub more more useful, and more full fledged. You know, um, instead of just being a repository of papers. So yeah, good stuff. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, okay, so the next thing that we wanted to talk about, and this is like kind of inspired over the past couple of days from an idea that uh, Patrick had. And then uh, Nick actually reiterated it like when I just spoke with him. But um, so in theory, like there's a lot of unifying needs between all the fields of science. But like if there's going to be a journal for bioinformatics, like there would be some like field specific um, you know, value proposition that might not apply to like a journal that um, covers botany, for instance. Um, so one thing we've been thinking about is potentially starting to allow customization of each hubs. So uh, Nick was mentioning that in GIS, like people would want to share like files of maps. So we could potentially create um, features for like the GIS hub specifically that allows it to be kind of unique compared to the other hubs and uh, have a feature features that would serve that community better than really would be like needed for the botany hub. Um, this ties into a little bit of what we might do with open source development too. So if you're like, uh, if you're in a small field and you have the ability to add a feature that like you really want, um, you could do that on your own and kind of give the power to 
like individual scientists to build each hub into whatever they wanted it to be. So I'm curious just overall, if you think that's an interesting idea. At first glance, it feels like, I don't know, at least to me, it feels like more flexibility would be more preferable than just, you know, perfectly customized hub for just you, right? Because there might be other people in the field that disagree on your vision, how it should be structured. So I think ultimately in the end, right, because you, it seems like you're moving in this direction of micro publications and the normal publications and pre-registrations and everything, you should uh, maybe implement the ability to create you know, depositories for files of, you know, any, any files, right? Be it maps or scripts or data or whatever, regardless of the hub, maybe. But that's just me. I think that's super valid feedback. Um, I think in general too, adding complexity, especially at our early stage is not always ideal. So um, the, the reason I like it is because it, to me feels more like community driven. And I think having that, you know, general um, as one of our values as an organization, I think is good, but you're totally right that this could easily be another tab like on Kobe's designs where it's like files, right? Which could have like data sets, maps, like, um, anything so i think that makes a lot of sense but but it could we could definitely go this way I, in terms of building community i think this this aspect is currently actually lacking because there is no way for people to meaningfully interact with each other other than you know stumble into each other in comments so if you do want to go this route i i would very much be glad to see pages like community homepage where you know, or community chat or community you know, file repository or something right so something people can like enter or be part of subscribe to so they can get uh, you know exclusive or non-exclusive access to whatever is going on in the current community right so when people can create other types of pages except you know uh, not not just the papers or the questions they can create whatever the hell they want yeah 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 it's funny our tagline is github for uh science but one of the um i think use cases that we have requested a lot is um like the ability to replace slack or discord um so like having that you know wiki and chat for each hub i think would be really cool um so Pat and I actually have another call right now, so we have to hop off. But thank you guys for joining. This is super helpful. And then uh, we'll post the recording so that way everybody else can see. So thanks for being open to that, too. Cool. See you, everybody. See you all.